wow. I mean, look at us. Who would have thought that we would have been here? Well, unfortunately, not me, because I didn't play the games. Oh man, that was probably really bad. I probably shouldn't have admitted that right off the bat. But when we live in a world full of countless sequels, requels, reboots, rehashes, and readaptations, it was pretty much inevitable that one of the biggest games of the decade was going to be adapted onto our screens one way or another. And when it comes to readapting great and, honestly for lack of better words, more superior entertainment like video games or anime, what you end up with most of the time is, well, this. Or are you a castaway, grasping for a handhold in a tempest? There is a tempest in me! You're alive. Too bad you will die. Oh man, that show was... <laughs> that show was extremely bad. But for every Rings of Power, She-Hulk, and Cowboy Bebop, there must also be some hidden diamonds in the rough. And that comes in the form of HBO Max's The Last of Us. A show that I imagine most people that were fans of the games probably went into with a high amount of skepticism and lack of faith that their source material was actually going to get a proper adaptation. And I'm glad to say... That couldn't be further from the truth, and to be honest, it had quite the opposite treatment. It seemed as if with the release of each new episode, the quality of the characters and the storytelling just continued to rise with it, the fan investment as well. So with that, is The Last of Us the best video game adaptation that we've ever seen put to screen? That's probably a better question for when part 2 comes out, but for now, let's talk about The Last of Us Season 1. So, to not bore you with the overwhelming basic zombie apocalypse storyline, the show follows our two main characters, Joel and Ellie. Joel being a more grizzled and troubled character, jaded and shaped by the loss of his daughter at the beginning of the outbreak, therefore making him a more, less empathetic and cold-hearted character. With Ellie, on the other hand, being a more outspoken and energetic teenager, who also just happens to might have the cure to the fungal virus in her blood. After a chance run-in with Ellie's guardian Marlene, one of the leaders of a rebellion group at the time called the Fireflies, Joel is tasked with the responsibility of not only Ellie's life and what might be the key to saving the rest of humanity, but also the task of finding his missing brother who he had just lost communication with a couple days prior. And with that being said, well, the rest of the show plays out exactly how you think it would, but with more puns. It doesn't matter how much you push the envelope, it'll still be stationary. I stayed up all night, no. wondering where the sun went, and then it dawned on me. Man, it's actually kind of funny because some of those were actually good if you watch the show, I'm not gonna lie. But when it comes to the rest of the plot, it just finds that Joel and Ellie fighting bad guys, dodging and evading and killing infected, and slowly but surely getting to know each other and care for each other over the time. Putting them both in situations where they have to save each other's lives and cultivating in what might be one of the most satisfying endings that I've seen in a TV show for quite some time. And don't get me wrong, that's not to say that the show is without its flaws and mishaps. For starts, let's talk about the infected. Or, well, the lack of them. The Walking Dead is my favorite show of all time. And while that's a different topic for another day, I bring that up because I don't want to say that I came into the show with the expectations of it being a full-on zombie apocalypse-like show. But the problem is, neither is The Walking Dead. Both of the shows that The Last of Us and The Walking Dead at its core are very much character-driven shows. Without the fan investment of the characters and the writing that makes these characters likable, both shows will just become empty hollows of themselves. But when it comes down to the glaring difference I found between the two, it felt as if the apocalypse, the people, and the environment were legitimate threats in The Walking Dead. Compared to the basically non-existent feeling of stakes that I felt for the infected when it came to The Last of Us. And while yes, throughout the show we had a couple of characters that we got to know for a brief period of time lose their lives to the infected, and even one scene that we got where, I mean it was, it was pure chaos. 
it just further solidifies my point of being that there's only one scene of that. The first two episodes of the show open with cold openings that really displayed the stakes of what the world would be like if a fungal infection were to actually make its way into humans and how catastrophic that would actually be. But in reality, that's all it really was. Just dialogue. Otherwise, while the show can portray fake stakes like sneaking through buildings or the brief mention that, yeah, infected still exists, there's still kind of no way of getting around the fact that I didn't really feel like they were an actual threat throughout the entirety of the show. I've also heard that there's some people that have played the game that there's a little bit of a problem with the pacing in the show. And, well, I didn't really feel that. When it comes to maybe episode 7, an episode based almost entirely in a flashback with Ellie, diving deeper into her life before Joel and the pivotal choices and decisions that she's made in her life leading to losing loved ones and figuring out that she's infected, I honestly didn't feel like the show dragged out at all. The only thing that I can really think in my head, and it just leads back to my earlier criticism, where we probably could have found the time for more scenes setting stakes for the infected, but otherwise, the pacing was fine, and by the time you get to the finale of the show, you're fully locked in with our characters and their choices, making the entirety of the ride just more and more gripping. And well, speaking of characters, stepping aside from our two main leads, the supporting cast also had a helping hand in what makes this show work so well. From characters like Tess, Bill, and Frank, Marlene, even Captain Cannibal, the show does a great job of making them all real and relatable characters, not just the cartoon villains that you're used to seeing nowadays in Hollywood, where the villain just has no real or primal reason for doing what they're doing, just being evil for the sake of being evil. But no character introduced throughout the show is either morally right or morally wrong, just walking that gray line between morality and survival with context and nuance clearly on full display from the writing room with these characters, always making sure to let the audience and the characters in the show know the situation that he or she finds themselves in. Some people like to call it the cause, therefore leading the audience on a clear and concise path of why the characters are making the decisions that they're making and the choices that affect not only themselves, but the narrative as a whole. I mean, wow, truly imagine good and thoughtful character writing and what that can bring to your storytelling when it comes to the finale as i said previously i gotta say that this is one of the best that i've seen in a while when it comes to all forms of entertainment rather that be movies tv shows or anime it seems as if finding a satisfying conclusion to your story is one of if not the hardest thing to do when it comes to writers and with the last of us already having a pre-established ending stemming from the games that's not to say that that was the clear-cut route that HBO was trying to go with. You've seen plenty of shows and movies that the endings to your story can sometimes make or break what you're telling, with some of the most extreme examples on each end of the spectrum being Avengers Endgame and Game of Thrones Season 8. Yes. <laughs> Both of those franchises at the top of their game in their respective industries at the time of their conclusions. But man, when it comes to Game of Thrones, the one that royally botched their ending, fading not only into fan apathy, but a completely dead show as a whole that corrupted its entire rewatchability, it's honestly extremely sad. But when you look at the other hand and with Marvel, it's basically holding on to the entirety of its fan base solely on the prospect of what was done in its earlier phases and the conclusion of all of it. And when it comes to The Last of Us, the action, the tone, and the character actions and decisions were all top tier in the finale. And honestly, it looks like we might be leading into one of the biggest divisive seasons of television that we might ever get if they stick to the source material of The Last of Us Part 2. Overall, as a newcomer, and I imagine for those who also played the game, that this was a rather well done and well received adaptation that honestly surpassed my expectations. And while it might not be the most perfect adaptation to ever be put to screen, fans of the show could have easily gotten worse. A lot worse. Or are you a castaway, grasping for a handhold in a tempest? There is a tempest in me! 
fuck. Thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more future videos like this, and make sure to go check out some of my other videos that might pique your interest. As always, I also have a rating for The Last of Us short out as well. The link will be in the description for that, and it's just a more detailed rating of all the aspects of what goes into making a show or a film. Make sure to leave a comment down below, and oh, especially if you played the games, because I'm genuinely interested of how you all felt about the adaptation. Did you hate it? Did you like it? Imagine it's a whole different experience for you, so I'm truly just trying to know your thoughts. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you guys today. Bye.